Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got a man for you today who is living the dream. In his mid-twenties, he's already touring the world, having hit albums and even selling out the London Palladium. Nathan Carter's got a new single out called Wanna Dance, and he joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. Yeah, great to be on the show. Thank you. Do you know, it's lovely to talk to you. I haven't seen you live, but a good friend of mine was at the Palladium gig and he said you are just remarkable. There aren't many people doing what you do, A, vocally, or B, having the prowess to sell out a venue that big. Uh, well, thanks very much. Uh, you know, I, I've been gigging since I was uh, 16. I left school at 16 and played in pubs and clubs. And, um, you know, I, I work hard at putting on a, a really good show and, and bringing... Um, some of the best musicians ever, a band of seven lads that are really, really talented guys, multi-instrumentalists, and, and we, we, we really work hard on you know, bringing a really lively, uh, upbeat and energetic show that we can. Also, I'm a deeply unattractive man. You seem to be a nice bit of trouser that seems to entertain your audience visually. Congratulations, that must be nice. <laughs> Thanks very much. What's it like being a sex symbol? Um, geez, I would not see myself as a sex symbol, to be honest. But um, I suppose uh, it's, it's a it's a compliment, all right. Um, yeah, well, we 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 have a lot of uh, the, the audience will be totally mixed coming to gigs, but there are a lot of females that um, you know always uh, want pictures and, and stuff. So um, so I always try and be as as obliging as I can. Oh, oh, to be delicious! If you just had my face for one day, Nathan, it'd all be over. <laughs> It is the package, though, isn't it? If you've got a great band and great songs and a good look and an amazing voice like you, you've made it. And I think that's one of the reasons you've taken the world by storm. And it seems to me you were born to be a big star in America, too. I guess that's got to be a dream of yours to hit America because that sound is played on the radio every day over there. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to get toward America up ahead and release the album out there. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely something on the cards. Um, I've just been so busy. Get, I mean, I do like 150 to 160 gigs a year, and generally that's in Ireland and the UK. So um, trying to get time to, to, to go further afield uh, is pretty tough. But, it's, you know, I'm working on it this year. Where I'm in France, would you believe, in the next two days, performing at a festival there, and then I'm in Australia at the end of the year, uh, plus fitting in our UK tour in September. So... Um, really busy at the minute and um, thankfully people are coming out to the shows and buying the album Do you know what I love about you too you're not the kind of guy that goes on a reality show and gets your man's sausage out gets on the front pages of the paper and goes away you're a worker I mean you're literally gigging every day to keep yourself at top form and I think there's a lesson to be learnt in that isn't there? Well, definitely. I mean, I've been brought up. I, I helped my dad out in building sites for a good few years, and, and you know, he always sort of taught me if you if you if you want to get somewhere, you've got to work hard at it. Like, no matter what it is, whether you know you're in a journalist, whether you're into music, whether you're a footballer, or just you know want to be successful in business, you've got to really work at it. So, you know, I, I do try and uh, work as hard as I can. I think to August I have two days off between gigging, uh, recording, and uh, I'm actually recording a new TV series for RTE here in Ireland. So, um, so yeah, you know, you've got to work hard at it, and hopefully you reap the, the, the rewards afterwards. And, of course, last year you had that Christmas special, which was a massive success. Again, to do both live and TV is so rare. What's the recipe then? Why are you so special that you've managed to create this career that, frankly, was sort of happening all the time 20, 30 years ago, but not now? People can't do both well, can they? Uh, I, I, I don't know what it is, to be honest. I think um, what work ethic, as we've just said, you know, needs needs to happen. But you've got to feel comfortable uh, in front of a camera as well, which I did struggle with for a while. I had to really work at it, um, you know. You, uh, but you generally, once you start reading auto cues and you're, you're into uh, TV work, it, it becomes more natural the more you do it. So I think that's a, a kind of a thing. I mean, that, that TV special there that we did at Christmas was watched here in Ireland by like half a million and, and RT gave me the, the series, a, a four-part four series which we recorded in August. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to get to perform with um, acts from America, acts from the UK, Ireland, uh, as well as doing a bit of chatting with them as well. So um, it's just it's something different than live, uh, but, you know, I, I enjoy it just as much. I hope you take this as a compliment. I mean it. You're sort of the nearest thing we've got to a buble, where you're a personality, you work on TV, radio, and especially live. I mean, that's no bad comparison, is it? I, I, I mean that as a great compliment. Oh, 
Oh, geez, that's a big compliment to me. I mean, a, a big fan of Buble and always have been. Uh, you know, and uh, if I only had half of his uh, his money, I'd be, I'd be a happy man. You're not doing uh, bad. Yeah, no, it's it's um, it's a big compliment for sure. And, and you know, um, I think you say. I mean, Buble is 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 kind of like the Sinatra of today as well. You know, and it goes back to. Again, like you say, doing TV and shows and live shows and recording. Um, you know, I think um, I think it's about time we, we we got back to that as well. You know, I, I get fed up with the the um, these competitions. You know, from singing competitions, everyone wants to be famous instead of being you know yeah. good at what they do. You know, and you can't just learn it overnight. You can't stand in front of eight million people on your first gig and expect to be able to stand in front of 40 in a pub. It's a very different thing. And the reality is you're never going to play Wembley night after night after night. And I think that intimacy with a crowd is only born out of doing it again and again like you have since being a child. Definitely. Oh, without a doubt. You know, and, and the, the funny thing is I, I'm sometimes more nervous doing small shows than I am doing big shows. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's it's just about doing it time and time again and, and enjoying what you do. I mean, uh, people realize if you're not enjoying it as well you've got to be uh, happy with yourself and what you're doing and, and be confident in what you do like you know you also have an effortless voice when I hear you sing it's so rich and round and it doesn't sound like you have to work very hard at it are you one of those type of performers that wakes up in the morning and does scales for three hours or are you blessed with this gift um, I'm, oh, I, I, I am pretty lucky that I don't have to generally warm up that much at all. I mean, a couple of minutes before the show, I'll be, probably be doing a few warm ups, but uh, generally, touch wood, I'm pretty lucky with the voice. You know, I, I don't have much issues with it, and um, I find the odd pint of Guinness helps it tremendously as well, which is uh, <laughs> a good thing. Do you know, some people can be sickening when they're so talented, Nathan. It can get right on my nerves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the writing, let's talk about that, because this new single really is wonderful. It's going to get airplay because it's got that sound about it. Wanna Dance is the new single by Nathan Carter, out in early August. You write all this stuff yourself. I wonder who inspires you and you, where you get these ideas from. I get a lot of the ideas from being on the road and meeting people and, and at the gigs. You know, um, I wrote this song because I sat down, I wrote the song with a guy called Don Maskell, who's a really, really talented songwriter in his own right. Um, and I said to Don, I said, I need a, a new uh, a title track for the album. And I said, it needs to be really, really uh, easy to sing, you know, chorus with a, probably not that many difficult lyrics in it. It has to be very simple and the melody has to be really easy to sing. So we came up with Wanna Dance and, um, you know, it's, it's. Um, I think it's, it, it, hopefully it will appeal to, to everyone. I mean, it's not just a, a teeny bopper song or it's not a, you know, a big ballad, but it, it, it's something that people will, hopefully, like you say, will get played on the radio and people will learn easy enough. It's got a great vibe to it and I think it'll do really, really well. You mentioned earlier the TV show you'll be singing with other people. Have you got your eye on certain people you'd like to do duets with? Definitely. I mean, I, I love a lot of the country singers uh, that I've gone up listening to, from Bud Paisley to Rascal Flatts and, and them sort of people. Um, but, you know, I, I love so many different types of music, you know, from folk music. I mean, people like the Dubliners are huge influences on me. Unfortunately, unfortunately a, lot of, a lot of them have passed away now. But, you know, I, I love so many different types of music. And, um, you know, to, to perform with good artists is, is always easy enough, you know, whenever they're very good at what they do. I've been lucky enough to interview many stars in dressing room one at the London Palladium. I can't imagine, though, what it feels like to walk out on that stage with the pin focus on you, with your name uh, above the theatre, and you've got to entertain for two hours. How does that feel? Um, it was a lot of pressure, to be honest, on the night. Uh, it, it was made more surreal by the fact that when I was in that dressing room that you're talking about, the picture of Sinatra, a picture of... Yeah. Uh, John Lennon and Paul on the wall uh, all these people that had played there over the years was just Judy mental, Garland you know, to think yeah you know I had a show there the same as these people mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to pinch myself um, but you know it, the, the Palladium gig was a really good gig and um, you know it, it was just something a little bit special about that venue that you know the people had played there and, and I think everyone in the audience knew that night as well I mean we filmed the video for Wanna Dance uh, at, the, at that venue as well we filmed it at the Palladium so wow. it's just gone up on YouTube now and it's, it's kind of cool you know there's no venue like it in the world because of that history when you think from Bob Hope to Margaret Thatcher they've all walked through that door and it's extraordinary definitely 
definitely without a doubt I mean it's it's one of them buildings that you just know it, there's something special about it the minute you set foot in it Let's talk about you and your life when you're not performing do you have any time to have fun or are you always working and when you do have fun what do you like to do? Um, yeah no, I, I do I, I kind of the odd week off here there and everywhere but um, I, I, I live in uh, in Northern Ireland in a place called Enniskillen which is surrounded by water and um, that's the main reason I, I, I came here because I have a boat and I love water sports and I'm a very keen uh, water skier and uh into um, a lot of different water sports from wakeboarding to kneeboarding so um, I do that whenever I get my time off, time off. but um, generally it's always raining here so <laughs> that's pretty sunny but uh, you know it's still good fun What is it with you and the rain? I mean you were born in Liverpool it's pretty damp there too there's something about the people isn't there? I was talking to somebody yesterday Stan Boardman an old comedian who we were discussing oh, yeah. the sort of melting pot of people that are there I mean they were years ahead of their game in Liverpool um, it does create a certain nuance in you that probably other people don't have I, I think you can't you cannot be influenced uh, born in that city by you know obviously the, the, the famous four but you know people like Ken Dodd who's just been around for so long mm. and you know like Stan as well you know there's so many uh, from Scylla who you know was an amazing uh, entertainer in her own right you know TV and, and vocalist so it, it, you cannot not be influenced by them people growing up in Liverpool and I think it, uh, it definitely helps without a doubt Do you still get intimidated when you meet people is it surprising to you that you're on the same bill as others and therefore as good as they are in the eyes of show business uh, without a doubt yeah yeah you know um, yeah. <laughs> no matter whenever you I mean I have so many idols um, you know and I I haven't got to meet a lot of them, but I, I know for a fact when I do, I, I will be definitely gobsmacked, you know. Who's on the list? Uh, well, the man you mentioned before, Bubli, is, is, is huge, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, I think he's uh, such a talent. Uh, people like Ed Sheeran, um, people like Van Morrison, who I think is uh, you know, one of the best writers of the last 50 years. Um, so, the, you know, if, if I do get to meet them, I know I'll be uh, definitely... Uh, probably short for words whenever I do Is it still surprising to you that people put their hand in their pocket after a day's work and buy a ticket to see your show I think that's the greatest compliment aside from the TV shows and the fame and the YouTube and all this stuff the fact that regular people are using their money to see you is a great compliment isn't it Without a doubt you know money these days is, is pretty hard to come by and whenever you see um, we have a lot of people that come back to the shows time and time again as well which is uh, you know, very very unique. Um, but it is. It's it, whatever people. And generally, it's not just the price for tickets. You know, people are travelling in a taxi. They maybe baby minders. Uh, they're staying in a hotel. They're eating out dinner beforehand. It ends up you know very expensive nights out sometimes. So to think people have spent that amount of money to come and see the show is, is you know really really um, heartwarming to be honest. You know, and, and, yeah. and I, I hope I never forget it. To be honest. And at 26, there you are living the dream, selling out the Palladium, your own TV show, talking to people, idiots like me. Uh, I wonder, the one question that all the girls want to know, is is Mr. Carter still available? Are you on the market? Seems to be the one question everybody wants me to ask. Yeah, well, I am, would you believe? Um, I generally am travelling that much. I don't get much time for a love life. Um, what is it, Nathan? Uh, Personal hygiene? What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think it's not personal hygiene, yeah, anyway. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'd say time is is the biggest problem with me. Uh, tomorrow I'm in France. The day after I'm in uh, the south the south of Ireland. Uh, next week I go back to England to do more interviews. You know, uh, but you know, uh, eventually uh, in the next few years I hope to find the the right lady and, and maybe uh, settle down a little bit then. You see, I'm an ugly guy. I don't get opportunities. But I mean, you had 4,000 potential opportunities in the Palladium and you couldn't find one who was good enough. Come on, Nathan. <laughs> they wouldn't allow me to do a meet and greet, would you believe, afterwards either. They, they, uh, they said there was no meet and greets allowed, so I didn't get to meet anyone. I did meet a few in the pub over the road afterwards. We had a few drinks around yeah. the corner, you know, which was good fun. I know you're big on that, aren't you? You really pride yourself on getting as close to the fans as you can and giving them your time and thanking them personally. You're renowned for that. Uh, 
yeah, definitely. I mean, if I can do a meet and greet, if the venue will allow it, I generally do one for an hour to an hour and a half afterwards. Sign anything anyone wants signed, you know, selfies, autographs, whatever, you know. And it's nice, you know, like we were saying before, people spend a lot of money to come to the show. So if I can meet them and, you know, say hello and thank you, then it's, it's the least I can do. Congratulations on the new single. Wanna Dance is out in August and uh, is taken from this new album, which is really remarkable and tremendous. I think you're going to go from success to success, and as soon as you catch on in America, I think we'll probably see the last of you because they're going to love you. I can just hear your sound being played on FM radio across the country because it's it's so relevant today. You make great music contemporary, and that's not easy to do. Congratulations. Well, listen, I, I appreciate that. This has been definitely one of the best interviews I've done in a while, and I appreciate uh, all your your comments there. And listen, hopefully we'll see some of the listeners. At, we're coming to the UK in, in September, we're performing all over England and Scotland, uh, and hopefully we'll see some of the, the listeners at some of the shows. Well, I look forward to seeing you too. Nathan Carter, you can find him by just putting in Google Nathan Carter, and the new single, Wanna Dance, is out in August. Great to talk to you. Thank you, Nathan. You too, pal. All the best. See you soon.